insightful podcasts by informative hosts. Insights into Things, a podcast network. Welcome to Insights into Entertainment, a podcast series taking a deeper look into entertainment and media. Your hosts, Joseph and Michelle Whalen, a husband and wife team of pop culture fanatics, are exploring all things from music and movies to television and fandom. Welcome to Insights into Entertainment. This is episode 50. Jedi, superheroes, and ghosts. Oh, my. Oh, and Baby Yoda. <laughs> Baby Yoda. Nice. I'm your host, Joseph Whalen, and my question mark, question mark, and question mark, question mark co-host, Michelle Whalen. <laughs> Obviously, somebody didn't read over some notes and realize they need, I didn't they, fill in the blanks. You didn't fill in the blanks. I didn't realize you were uh-huh. playing Mad Libs. So, <laughs> adjective and adjective. <laughs> uh, so, uh, my my beautiful and creative co-host Michelle Whalen. Thank you. Is that better? Sure. So this is episode fifty. We've made it what? this long. That's incredible. We're almost up to a, a full year now. Wow. Who would have thought? It's. Uh, I didn't. I didn't think this was going to last. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, one quick programming note. Um, we changed how we stream. We're live right now. We did change how we stream. But mm-hmm. I, I was multi-streaming from my recording software, and now we are using a stream reflector called Restream.io. Okay. So as a result, I send one stream out, so our stream performance actually should be better. Okay. And now that's sending out to Twitch, to Facebook, but I can't do it to the page right now. It's doing it to mine. Oh, okay. But we're streaming live on YouTube, our YouTube channel now. Really? Wow. So that is Go an figure. So Go us. Moving up in the world, got to love technology. Hey, look, I see us live on Facebook. That's hey, awesome. see, look at that. <laughs> so, got a busy show this week. Sure. Uh, we're going to be talking about uh, some comments that you and McGregor made about the new Obi-Wan. Uh TV show, mini series, whatever it's supposed to be on Disney Plus. Sure. We have some Captain Marvel 2 news. Uh, we have, of course, some Baby Yoda news. Because you always have to talk about Baby Yoda. Always. It's my um, podcast. I can do what I want. Whatever you want. <laughs> happy, all Baby Yoda all the time. Happy okay. wife, happy life. <laughs> happy um, Baby Yoda. Entertainment news. We're going to be talking about uh, some Ghostbusters news. Then we've got <clears throat> some more Picard news with uh, a familiar face coming back for the show. Uh, we have some Doctor Who news and then some sad news on the passing of one of the alumni of Monty Python. So then we'll do our insightful picks of the week. Are we ready to get started? Let's do it. All right. Go for Disney Detective. So this was something that kind of came out uh, this week. There were actually a bunch of different stories um, about the Obi-Wan show on Disney Plus being postponed, being canceled. There were all these different uh, articles that that came out. And um, the the latest was that uh, Obi-Wan star, Ewan McGregor, actually had said that all of the, you know, the stuff going around was basically bullshit. Um, he Potty was, mouth. Wh- I'm just quoting him. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, he was speaking to the press at the premiere of Warner Brothers Birds of Prey. Uh, he wanted to clarify that, you know, shooting was supposed to start in August and basically just got pushed until January. Um, and that, you know, adding that the clashes over the creative differences weren't true. Um, that, you know, he basically said that it's not nearly as dramatic as it all sound, you know, online, um, that they basically pushed the shootout to the beginning of next year. 
Uh, he said that the scripts are really good. He saw about 90% of it and he really liked it, you know, but all this bull about the creative differences, you know, none of it was true according to, you know, to what he said. Um, you know, so basically they were supposed to start shooting this August and now it's going to be January of 2021 that they're going to start shooting, but it sounds like they were still going to make whatever premiere date they were um because i guess it wasn't supposed to premiere until sometime in in 2021 um so you know it, it's you know basically uh, uh some of it um so there were initial reports that you know it was indefinitely delayed then the hollywood reporter on thursday noted that it was on hold to kind of undergo a retooling because they were saying that it, a lot of the script kind of was very similar to the Mandalorian and that, you know, because of the, the time frame of, of the story and that, you know, it's an exiled Jedi and he's taking on, you know, this protective uh, role model thing. You know, they said that it was kind of mimicking a little bit of the Mandalorian and maybe but, that but was why. it's really not though because you, like that story of Obi-Wan's already established. So right, and it's and it's there. also, it's supposed to be 15 years after um uh, what do you call it? Um the third Revenge one? Revenge of the Sith. Revenge of the Sith, thank you. So it's supposed to be 15 years after and it's before you know, a new hope and everything. So you're talking, you know, the Mandalorian happens after Return of the Jedi. So you're talking, it's not the same time frame, but I guess, you know, people that were reading it over kind of were like, okay, well, we kind of did this story already. Let's go back and, and do it. So, you know, he had actually said that he hadn't heard, you know, anything uh, like that. The other thing, too, was that originally there were supposed to be six episodes, and then now it's only supposed to be a four-episode series. Um, but originally it was supposed to be a movie, basically, kind right. of like how Solo was and, and everything, and that they kind of, you know, changed their mind and... and and did you know decided to do it as a, a series instead? So now it's going to be a, I guess a four part mini series, is what it. You and know, I, it'll you know, really be. and I think I guess it depends on how long you're going to make each episode. It kind of makes right. sense because there's not a lot of story in there, like to make it a multi season, you know, episodic series. I don't right, think there's right. enough in there for that, but there's probably enough in there to have a movie and a half's worth mm -hmm. of, of information. Yeah, and so you figure if each episode is an hour-ish long, then, you know, right. two movies and, and you're done. So Yeah, so, I mean, yeah, they probably didn't have enough to go six. Right. Especially if you're going to start cutting out some of the material that you had in the script already. Right, right. My concern is they, you know, they've got this in the works and they've got Mandalorian they're working on right. and they're revising uh, the Clone Wars series mm -hmm. and they've got the uh, Cassie and Andor one that they're going right, to so right. they've, they're going to have a lot of balls in the air at once mm -hmm. trying to juggle all these and things. And maybe that's the other thing too is they, they need to kind of space it out. You don't want to have so much all at once right. because then you're flooding and you know kind of what happened with the you know Star Wars movie every year you know your your content kind of you know went a little overboard you right. know and it was too much. And, you know. and it might be too much of a demand on your on your development team. Right. It, it all depends on who they've got involved. Mm-hmm. You know, it seems like they're very happy with Favreau and uh, Dave mm -hmm. Filoni right now. Yeah, yeah. So I could see those guys getting involved in this and trying to keep that same level of quality going. But that might be clashing with other projects that they're working right. on right now, too. So I'm not concerned about them pushing this. Right. Um, Make it, you know, do the best job you can. Don't, I can understand don't push it out. McGregor's annoyance at this because right. this is his livelihood, you know. You don't want rumors floating around about it, and then right. it jeopardizes other projects mm -hmm. that you're working on. Right, so. yeah. So anyway, tell us about Captain Marvel. So we kind of weren't really surprised by this because they've been hinting at this, but it seems that the WandaVision writer, Megan McDonald, is in talks to write the sequel to Captain Marvel, according to an individual uh, who is working on the project. Uh, directors Anna... Bowden and 
uh, Ryan Fleck, who co-wrote and directed the first Captain Marvel, will not return to direct the sequel, but they're in talks to still work with Marvel Studios and to possibly direct a Disney, another Disney Plus series. Uh, Marvel is actually hoping to land a female filmmaker for the sequel and is eyeing a potential release for 2022. Now, a different article that I had read said uh, that Anne Bowden was actually still on board to possibly direct. So, you know, not sure what the the correct source is. Yeah. At, you know, at this point, maybe it's still, you know, maybe they're trying to find somebody else to work with her or somebody com- completely different. Um, so last year's Captain Marvel, so- starring Brie Larson uh, as the title character, grossed $1.1 billion worldwide. Um, McDonald uh, got her first writing credit on WandaVision, and the series is just one of the multiple Marvel projects that is in development for Disney+. Plus. You have, obviously, Falcon and Winter Soldier, uh, that's also going to be debuting this year, um, along with WandaVision, which is set to debut uh, in 2021. So there's very few details about what is going to be the the storyline for Captain Marvel, Um, but you know, they had said at Comic Con uh, that the show would kind of lead uh, directly into the events of Doctor Strange in the multi universe of madness. And it was also announced at the time that the show would feature uh, Photon, who's the grown up version of Captain Marvel's character, uh, Monica. Okay. So, um, so again, not really a whole lot. You know, they basically teased at, at last year's Comic Con that, you know, oh, yeah. Black Panther 2 and Guardians of the Galaxy 3 and Captain Marvel 2 and oh yeah Fantastic Four so we knew it was coming we just didn't know when obviously in, well, in the let's lineup be honest. so it's, it's hard to get excited about sequels to these movies <laughs> after <laughs> Endgame <laughs> Endgame yeah yeah so it's like okay so they just defeated the largest villain in the universe who wiped out half the universe right what are they going to do now? Go get kittens out of trees? Like We're going to Disney World. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's hard to get excited about it at this point right, in time. Right, and Marvel's really... Right, and that's the thing is, do you... Set themselves up for challenges now. Right. Do you, you know, go back and now show what happened after the first movie? You know, like when she kind of, you know, disappeared? You know, or is this a post... Uh, right, game. that's the thing, because you know Black Widow's coming out, that's going right. to be a flashback. That has to be a flashback, because she's... She's dead. She's dead. No, no spoilers, <laughs> no though. No spoiler. <laughs> so, she's not around anymore. I, know, I just hope that this doesn't uh, show signs of the ongoing problem Disney has keeping you know directors going on their projects here. Right, right. Seems like every project, every movie project that comes out now, there's some level of controversy over directors anymore right whether it's star wars or marvel right right so so we hopefully shall see. hopefully everything goes off without a hitch yeah speaking of disney <laughs> let's talk about how they're strong arm and uh baby yoda fans so say goodbye to your expendable income because baby star wars mania shows no signs of slowing down and of course everybody's fallen over head over heel for baby yoda aka the child who was introduced obviously during the mandalorian uh now there's a 3d artist who's actually obsessed with baby jabba the hut and i hate to say it he's kind of ugly i don't yeah. know. i don't feel for him the same way i do baby yoda no well and he's a slug right so it's and hard to get excited about you know that. it's like oh look how cute the slug is you know um so basically there are people that are like really excited about <laughs> baby jabba um you know so everybody's kind of going all crazy about it but then obviously like we've talked many times the lack of official merchandise for baby Yoda being out there, um, you know, and, and for, you know, Lucas and, and Lucas arts, you know, they were always the forefront on making sure that there was so much merchandise and everything. And of course we've talked about this for months and months and months, you know, that the whole point, you know, John Favreau came out and, and, you know, basically said time and time again, he really, you know, had to applaud Disney and Lucas films for not releasing toys, you know, uh, ahead of time so that it could be a surprise when the child was shown in, 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 
the series and everything and you know yeah well not releasing them ahead of time didn't necessarily mean not releasing them at all right and that you know so obviously naturally you have all the the artists and crafters who have now flooded sites like etsy hmm, with baby yoda products and disney now is actually kind of trying to squash all the unauthorized toys hats and and whatnot um so far disney has issued complaints with etsy which has been delisting various baby yoda products but unfortunately for consumers and sellers this means delays in product shipping you know, and, and sales issues. So while Etsy does enforce an intellectual properties policy, many creators are still kind of making their their products and just renaming them without putting, you know, searchable words like Star Wars or Baby Yoda in it. Um, in the meantime, obviously, Baby Yoda merchandise is coming out as fast as it can, which is obviously pretty slow for, you know, the, so a <laughs> hint for anyone looking for baby Yodas, you don't want baby Yoda, you want alien baby. <laughs> that will get you what you're looking for. Just saying. Um, you know, and as we had mentioned, you know, last week, uh, Build-A-Bear is, is going to be coming out and what we're in. But that's going to be licensed, obviously. Right. That's going to be, you know, all the licensed stuff is finally going to be coming out, you know, March, April, May time frame. Um, but again... You know, we've talked about it too. You know, this article talked about it, you know, as well. The people that are on Etsy that are selling their wares, that's a drop in the bucket compared right. to what Disney, you know, they're not hurting well, Disney but at you know all. What? Disney doesn't want other people getting money that they think they of course, deserve. But, you know, poo poo on them for but you not know what? This having things this ready in time. Uniquely Disney. Lucas right. did the same thing when he oh, ran yeah. his merchandising yeah. empire. Just to speak briefly on the on the baby Java thing. <laughs> He's um, so ugly. I can't even look at him. <laughs> diehard Star Wars fans, you know, deep in the weeds Star Wars fans will like recall yourself. that when the Clone Wars TV series premiered, it premiered as a movie in theaters, an animated movie, and then eventually that became a two-part television show mm -hmm. when the series started. <clears throat> well, one of the plot twists there was they had a baby hut that Ahsoka and... Uh, Anakin had to deliver. Okay. You know, as part of the whole subplot there. So a baby hut is not a unique thing, and it didn't look nearly as ugly as that. <laughs> oh, it actually looked cuter. Well, it did because okay. it was it was just animated. Okay. But what was the outstanding hut contribution to the Star Wars universe that came out of Clone Wars? Okay. Was a hut, and I believe the hut's name was Hero H I R O the hut who didn't sound like a hut, he sounded like he was doing an impersonation of Truman Capote the entire time. <laughs> so that was where we really got to learn the deep down roots of, mm. of what huts were all about. Nice. There. So, nice. So anyway, baby Yoda story, uh, baby <laughs> hut stories. There you go. Uh, and that is it for Disney Detective this week, right? That is it. All right, let's come back with some entertainment news. Go for entertainment news. So it has been confirmed that Bill Murray will be part of the new Ghostbusters Afterlife movie. Uh, the Ghostbusters franchise is returning to the big screen this summer with Jason Reitman's Ghostbusters Afterlife, the direct continuation of the story from the first two films. Nothing about that Nothing other here, people. movie that kind of came out couple years ago that was, no that was that was kind of like you know when the <laughs> ghostbusters one and two came out and you had the two competing animated ghostbusters tv series right right that one that last movie that came out wasn't the real ghostbusters right this right. one's the real this ghostbusters. is the real one so of course this means that the original team of ghostbusters remain a core part of the story's continuation and fans have been wondering whether or not the original cast would return 
uh, Dan Aykroyd had already confirmed his role, uh, but the rest had all still been rumors until the day the uh, this article actually uh, was released. Uh, the majority of the iconic Ghostbusters cast will be appearing in Ghostbusters Afterlife, and obviously Bill Murray being the last one to, to finally sign on board. Uh, Vanity Fair actually had visited the set um, in Canada and spent some time with Murray while they were filming the scenes. Uh, Murray's Peter Venkman is most definitely playing a part of the new film, as everyone had been hoping he would. Uh, Ernie Hudson, Sigourney Weaver, and Annie Potts are also going to be showing up in the movie, uh, though details around their roles are kind of, you know, under wraps. Uh, of the original stars, the only two, obviously, that won't be returning would be Rick Moranis and Harold Ramis. And Harold Ramis, he unfortunately passed away in 2014, but Murray explained that during... Um, uh, the visit to the Vanity Fair's visit to the set that they'll actually explain some of uh, his loss in in the movie that that's part of oh, okay. some of the plot line well, as to good. you know why he's not there. Um, he said that you know say uh, Murray actually was talking about the script and he said hey the script is good it's got a lot of emotions in it and it's got a lot of family in it and it's really interesting and it's gonna work so. Maybe it's not going to be as bad because I know we've been talking about it pretty much since we started doing yeah. the podcast when news came out about it and and there was the whole back and forth of do they really need to do this? What's it going to be? You know, well, and like Bill Murray's taken a lot of heat for not wanting to be a part of it because mm -hmm. he didn't really want to be a part of the last one. That's why he right. came in a different role, right? Um, but he makes a valid point in in why like he didn't want to come back just for the sake of coming back, right? You know, he wanted to make sure that the plot itself had some meaning, that there mm -hmm. was some purpose to it. Right, right. And it wasn't just a, a, you know, come back and make money type thing. Right, right. Whether or not it's going to turn out to be that or not remains to be seen. But mm -hmm. hopefully with with what he stated as fairly pure intentions, mm -hmm. uh, it should be a meaningful plot. Yeah, it, it sounds like it's kind of, you know, and, and from the, the trailer that they had for it already, it's... You know, it, it's a different take, but it's, you know, some of the same elements of it, right. you know. So it, it might actually not be not be so bad. Yeah. Okay. I'll buy that. So let's talk about Whoopi. <laughs> so this was actually really cute. So um, in, you know, Star Trek news, obviously Patrick Stewart has been making the rounds of you know, various entertainment shows and weekly magazines and, and whatnot, um, promoting his new uh, show that's um, on streaming on uh, CBS. What's a what's the CBS, CBS All Access? All Access. Uh, yeah, CBS All Access. And obviously it's uh, Star Trek uh, Picard, which we talked about last week when he um, was immortalized at the Chinese theater with his handprints right. and uh, footprints. So it seems that on Wednesday he visited um, one of his old friends, uh, Whoopi Goldberg. He was a guest on The View, and he had a lovely little announcement to make. And he uh, basically asked if she, uh, he invited her to reprise her role of Guinan for season uh, two. Um, and obviously, she accepted and just it, it was very sweet um you know and and you know she kind of got a little little teary-eyed you know towards the end and and she you know said that you know she's talked numerous times um you know on the show saying that her her time on star trek you know was one of her you know favorite times in her career, you know, so to be able to go back and, and play that again, you know, was just very meaningful, you know, for her. So, so that was, that was kind of cool. That's nice to reprise her. And it's, and you know, when I remember watching next generation, when mm -hmm. her character premiered and there was kind of a lot of controversy as to what the purpose of this character was mm -hmm. going to be and right, right. why they picked her, et cetera, et cetera. And she turned out to be a meaningful character mm -hmm. in the whole thing. To the point that she even wound up getting an appearance in um, Star Trek Generations, the first Next Generation movie. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I mean, she's turned out to be a, a great 
addition to the Star mm-hmm. Trek family. So yeah, yeah. It's so it's nice to see it continue. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see because you know we knew she was you know a time traveler you know of sorts because she you know was friends with uh, Mark Twain and with Q and right, the right. Borg and everything. So it'll kind of be interesting to see how they fit her in. I don't you think know. she was friends with the Borg though. Well, nobody's I, really the friends I with the characterize Borg. her as friends. <laughs> She's like, hey, let's go get a drink. <laughs> So, very cool. Speaking of time travel, that's a good lead-in to that our next That was a good story. lead-in. So, this this was very sweet news. Um, so, Doctor Who will actually be paying tribute to a late fan by naming a new character after him. So, it's been revealed that the series has a new key character uh, that is actually going to be named after a BBC online producer, Paul Corden, who passed away in 2019 after a short illness, and they're going to be naming a key character after him. So in the upcoming uh, episode, The Fugitive of the Jadoon? Sure. Sure. Um, The Jadoon leader is going to be named... Paul Khan Don, um, a low-key reference to Paul's name. Uh, the move has been praised by Paul's friends on social media with run running, oh my goodness, I'm weeping, I'm a weeping puddle. Uh, another Better friend, than a weeping angel, right? <laughs> right, exactly. Um, another friend said, how utterly amazing. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Paul was one of the most wonderful people ever and for me personally a without whom person died last year and now has a doctor who monster named after him just wow <laughs> i'm not sure that's an honor to have a doctor who monster named after you well, okay. you know you gotta have something um so they you know it was it was very um they basically had announced that back in may that the these uh, monsters were going to be returning uh, in full force because we actually haven't seen them since uh, season four with uh, the tenth Doctor. Actually, um, so they knew the monsters were coming back, but obviously it wasn't until recently that they um, renamed one of you know the characters in in honor of um, this this fan. So That's that was cool. that was That's... pretty sweet. That isn't something that Doctor Who does a lot. So. No, I mean this is this. Is pretty spectacular right for them to be doing something like this well and i guess since he also worked for the bbc you know i guess maybe a little bit more of a, a tie-in you want to drag you know. us down in the nepotism is that it i don't know <laughs> you never know just saying okay sure i'll go with that so the last one that we have today is unfortunately another sad one and that is the passing of of Terry Jones. Why don't you tell us about that? So Terry Jones uh, was a founding member of Monty Python and a beloved comedian, screenwriter, film director, poet, historian, and author. And he passed away earlier this week. Um, He was 77. He had actually been suffering from dementia, which was revealed publicly by his son in September of 2016, and it actually left him unable to speak. Um, in a statement, they said, we are deeply saddened to have to announce the passing of beloved husband and father, Terry Jones. Terry passed away on the evening of the 21st of January, 2020, at the age of 77 with his wife by his side after a long, extremely brave, but always good humored battle with a rare form of dementia, FTD. Uh, Over the past few days, his wife, children, extended families, and many close friends have been constantly with Terry as he gently slipped away at his home in North London. We have all all lost a kind, funny, warm, creative, and truly loving man who uncompromisingly, individually, relentlessly intellect with his relentless intellect and extraordinary humor has given pleasure to countless millions across six decades. Um, he, you know, it was interesting because, you know, he, he started out, um, you know, in college, you know, with a, a comedy troupe, um, with, you know, and, and met Michael Palin and that was kind of how the yep. start of, of things went. And then a few, le- you know, Years later, the, you know, they were working on a, um, another uh, group, and that's when they met Eric Idle. And then John Cleese and Graham Chapman came along, and before you knew it, there were, you know, a group of them, and Monty Python was born. Um, and 
Monty Python's Flying Circus, um, you know, ran on BBC for four seasons. Um, and then obviously from there, you ended up with Monty Python and the Holy Grail. Um, then The Life of Brian was in 1979. The Meaning of Life, um, 1983. Um, and then he went on to do, you know, different television shows. Um, yep. That's what I and, you know, remember him from mostly recently. Right. Is his documentary work that he's done. You know, and the other thing was he was a children's author, you mm -hmm. know, that I didn't realize. Um, he had done, you know, a bunch of different things um, with, you know, children's books, um, you know, and, and just so well-rounded, you know, in, in so many different things and, and just, you know, very, very sad, you know, that we, we lost him as we did. A founding member of what has often been described as the Beatles of comedy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They've been that impactful. And that's the thing is when you look at, at comedy, you know, beforehand, they really pushed the edge and went beyond, yeah. you know, and that, you know, now you have so many people that, you know, that look to them as, I, you know, did what I do now because of, you know, Absolutely. what they did. So yeah. started an inspirational trend that has, you know, had life for as long as it has. And it's going to continue, mm -hmm. you know, after his passing too. Yep. So, but sad to see him go. Mm -hmm. And I think that was all we had for entertainment news this mm -hmm. week. Uh, we'll come back with our insightful picks of the week. Okay. Go for your pick, dear. So this is not a new show. I've been <laughs> watching this show since the beginning, and for some reason when I was looking over notes, I realized I had never done it as m an insightful pick. So I figured might as well <laughs> get on it now before the show uh, goes off the air, um, and that would be This Is Us. Um, and you always make fun of it when I say I have to go watch This Is Us. So. Yes, but I won't <laughs> make fun of it now. So we'll Why, thank you. I appreciate it. it. Um, so This Is Us. Um, so a little bit, you know, it's every everybody has a family, and every family has a story. This Is Us chronicles the Pearson family across the decades, from Jack and Rebecca as young parents in the 1980s to their 38-year-old uh, kids, Kevin, Kate, and Randall, searching for love and fulfillment in the present day. Uh, this grounded, life-affirming dramedy uh, reveals how the tiniest events in our lives impact who we become and how the connections we share with each other can transcend time, distance, and even death. Uh, from the writer and creators of Crazy Stupid Love comes a smart, modern show that will welcome you into the family you feel like you've known for years. Um, when this show first aired, um, they're currently on season four as of right now. Um, and it was one of those things where when you watched the pilot, you were just like, all right, this is kind of cool. This is kind of cool. And then literally the last 10 minutes of the show, your mind just went, what? And from then on, you realize that was kind of going to be the formula of the show. There was always going to be in that last 15 minutes of the show, everything you thought you knew wasn't going to be, wasn't going to be right. And the way that they do things is so well done because they'll show you this person you know, and they kind of start following this person and you're like, okay, this person isn't a main character. Or we don't, you know, and then at some point you realize how that person intersected in one of the main characters lives, be it in the current time frame, sometimes from the past, or now they've even started to do future. Mm. So, you know, like the beginning of, of this season, you met this character and you're like, who who is he? You know, because you think you're in current time frame and you're like, oh, OK, whatever. He's going to run into, you know, one of the, the siblings or something. And then as it turns out, this is somebody's from the future. You know, this is like 25 years from the future. But it's not a time travel show. Right. It's not a time travel. It's just that they constantly jump back and forth. Like, you know, once you start watching the show, you kind of know, okay, anything you see with Jack, the dad, is is the past. Because, unfortunately, he passed away after a fire when his kids were 17. So you pretty much know anytime you see him, it's from the 1980s 
early right. 1990s. So it's a, the show itself tells the whole story right over of this time, family, but, but it, it constantly right. It doesn't periods. go in a linear fashion. It kind of goes back and forth, back and forth. So like last season ended with the the matriarch of the family basically on her deathbed. But this season she's, you know, a thirty something year old woman. She's a sixty something year old woman. You know, it constantly go goes back and forth. Um and what they've basically said is they knew when they started writing the show what the beginning of the show was going to be, what the middle of the show, and how the show was going to end. And they knew it was going to be told over six seasons, and that was it. They didn't need to tell the story, you know, any more than that. And, and at, at you know, the end of every episode, you kind of get a little hint, a little more of who this person is and, and you know, what their person's, you know, backstory is mm-hmm. and everything. And it, it's just so well done. And so very relatable you know it's not you know that over the top you know you you have you know uh you know somebody dealing with you know weight issues and weight loss issues and you have alcoholism and and you know lost love and you know um you know the the loss of the parent or loss of you know a, a child and and stuff and and just you know you can almost find you know, something about your own personal life that's in it and how they deal with it. And you're like, okay, I can, you know, again, it's nothing like over the top. It's not, you know, dun, 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 you know, drama type thing. Um, You know, because when the show Million Little Things came out, it was in some ways it was kind of similar, but William, but Million Little Things, which I think was one of my insight picks, you know, months ago, is a little more over the top with the the drama Mm. part of it, where this has the comedy and the lightheartedness, but yet, you know. It's realistic. And, yeah, it's more yeah. realistic, you know, in that. And it's one that, you know, I definitely, you know, it's Tuesday nights at uh, 9 o'clock, and it's it's one of the few shows that I will watch live. I try not to watch it the next day just because, you know, I want to be, you know, in that moment of it. Right. And, um, you know, like I said, it it's one where I'll be sad to see it go but it'll be nice because at least i know that's the way that they want it right you know to end and stuff so cool nice pick thank you i was wondering how long it was going to take you to get to this <laughs> <clears throat> all right moving on so my pick this week is a little bit different it's not a documentary <gasps> It's not. It's not a TV show. It's not. It's not a movie. It's not. It's not even a book. Oh my God, what could it be? It's an audio book. Oh. Uh, yeah, see? Mm. So, my, you know, in the wake of us uh, going to Disney and going to Hollywood Studios and visiting Star Wars Galaxy's Edge, I learned we didn't know anything about it. <laughs> Because we tried playing the <laughs> we trivia, tr- we tried playing the trivia, and we several times, and we were miserably. we were clueless. So this book happens to be uh, Galaxy's Edge: Black Spire by Delilah S. Dawson. Uh, it is an audio book from uh, Audible, narrated by January Lavoy. It's about twelve hours and fifty-seven minutes. And it's it's pretty good. It's very well done, very well published. You get your your uh, sound effects with it. You get oh, okay. your pew, pew. audio tracks pew, with pew. it. Um, and you know, just a general overall, you know, decent feel good Star Wars book. So the publisher's summary says: Walk the ancient streets, meet the colorful characters, and uncover the secret history of Star Wars Galaxy's Edge, the upcoming, but not upcoming anymore, expansion to the Disney Parks experience. After devastating losses at the hands of the First Order, General Leah Organa has dispatched her agents across the galaxy in search of allies, sanctuary, and firepower. And her top spy, Vi Marati, may have just found all three on a secluded world at the galaxy's edge. A planet of lush forests, precarious mountains, and towering petrified trees. Batu is on the furthest possible frontier of the galactic map, the last settled world before the mysterious expanse of wild space. The rogues, smugglers, and adventurers are here to avoid prying eyes and 
unnecessary complications. Vi, a resistant spy on the run from the First Order, is hardly a welcome guest. And when a shuttle full of stormtroopers lands in her wake, determined to root her out, she has no idea where to find help. To survive, Vi will have to seek out the good-hearted heroes hiding in a world that redefines scum and villainy. With the help of a traitorous trooper and a cervic droid, she begins to gather a colorful band of outcasts and misfits and embarks on a mission to spark the fire of resistance on Batu before the First Order snuffs it out entirely. The neat thing about this is as you listen to or read through the book itself, it walks you through various places that actually appear at Galaxy's okay. Edge at the at the outpost. The you know, Galaxy's Edge in, in Disney World and Disneyland represents one part of the planet that this okay. story takes place on. Mm -hmm. And it's the outpost and they walk you through the various different things. They describe stuff that you can literally go there and see. Okay. Uh, which is probably one of the coolest effects I think I've ever had. I've I've read and listened to a lot of Star Wars books in the past. And at best, you visualize these books through movies, mm -hmm. you know, as they're described to you. At no point in time are you able to actually walk through right, right. where this book takes place. So it's kind of neat to listen to the book after having walked the streets that they're talking so about. So we should have listened should to have it listened while to it we were driving on down. On the way down, it would have been perfect. So then we would have gone, oh. Oh, I remember yeah. this. So, and so next time. <laughs> the book itself delves into all the details, all the character traits, the personalities, the relationships. Um, you learn, like, you know, for instance, when we were down there, we went to Savi's workshop mm -hmm. to build our lightsabers. And you learn more about Savi and you learn about the gatherers. And it turns out that Savi has a, a junkyard outside the outpost that we didn't see when we came in. So I, okay. I guess we had to come in the other entrance. Oh, uh, if junkyard. we would have gone in the other one. But it, okay. it really isn't actually at the park. Right, right. It's, it's outside the outpost. Mm, okay. So, but you can <laughs> sort of think. You know, okay, right. Think sort of, of thing. where you are. And oh, okay. If we were able to go right. this area, we'd right. be able to see it. So. Uh, talks about you know they go to Docking Bay Seventeen or whatever it is mm -hmm. to get food. They right. go to Oga's Cafe, which we never Cantina, which we never got to. Right, right. Um, so it's just it's neat, you know, the tie-in itself. I've never had that kind of experience mm -hmm. before. The book itself is it's it's great. I mean, it's not the best the best book ever written, but right, right. Um, the purpose of the book itself was to introduce you to this new planet, and I think it, it knocks knocks the ball out of the park hmm. for that. So, Galaxy's Edge, Black Spire by Delilah Dawson, uh, available now on uh, Audible. Very uh, cool. And I think that was all we had. Mm -hmm. Um that we, we had some upcoming events here. Let's talk about our upcoming events. Sure. So, I, I added a, a couple uh, to our our upcoming list because they were ones that were going to be coming up uh, a little sooner. So obviously ZoloCon. ZoloCon. Can't, can't talk enough about that one. That one's actually going to be in two weeks now, uh, February 8th and 9th. Um, and that's the one that is held at the Fugue. And with any luck, I'll be there in costume. With any luck, you will be dressed up. Uh, then another one that will actually be coming up uh, the middle of March is Monster Mania 45. Monster Mania! <laughs> and that's held at the Crown Plaza, Philadelphia, which is actually Cherry Hill. Um, <laughs> I don't know yeah. why they call it that. <laughs> Kind of like New York teams playing kind of in, yeah, in that, Jersey. Yeah, that's, that's kind of funny. Um, that one is, um, it, it can get a little crowded because it yeah. is a very small venue. It all depends on what celebrities are, are there. Right. Well, on Saturday only, David Harbour uh, from Stranger Things will actually be there, uh, along with um, Danny uh, Trejo, um, Shetty. <laughs> uh, Chris Sarandon uh, from Princess Bride and the voice of Jack Skellington. Um, you know, so they usually get a bunch of different horror people uh, to, to show up. Um, they usually do a couple of different um, panels. We've never actually 
gone to to any of the panels. Um, they actually do some of the movies. Um, you know, they'll play movies in one of the the areas as well. Uh, it's really kind of grown. Uh, we've been going, I don't even know how many years. It's one of those things like we go and then, you know, we don't go for a couple of years. Yeah. And then it's like, uh, maybe we'll go, maybe we won't. At least 10 years we've been going. Some At least since we've she been. She was still in the stroller when we were going. Yeah, and I think maybe she wasn't even born the maybe. first couple of times. Because remember the first time we went, you did, we didn't know what to expect, so only I went. Right. And then one of the vendors had a whole bunch of Star Wars stuff, so we that ended up going. That was when David Prowse was there, and right. I was sick Well, and that I was the go. one year. Yeah, yeah, he was there the one year. Still bitter about that. Yeah, I know. Because he's, he's not going to shows anymore now. Right. So. Um, this was actually one of the shows where when The Walking Dead came out, I remember they had a whole bunch of members of the cast there, and like nobody was going in to see them because nobody had really started watching Walking Dead Norman yet. Norman Reedus was there for that. Norman Reedus was there. Um, uh, Scott, um, why can't I think of his last name? Um, Who's the character? Uh, the one that died. The, um, well, the Could you narrow that down a little bit? No, that died in real life. Oh, uh, uh, Herschel. Herschel. Yeah, yeah. He actually was there, and we actually like waved hi yeah, to he him. Actually, we were in a because restaurant we were in the restaurant and there, and, and he eat. walked by, and we were like, "Hey!" And yeah. you know, so that was kind of cool. Um, so yeah, so they they usually try and put together groups of people that were in the same you know movie to to kind of do a, a whole little thing. Um, so that, like I said, was going to be coming up uh, in March. Um, March 13th, uh, 13th, 14th, and 15th. Uh, then, of course, we have the Greater Philadelphia Comic Con, like we had mentioned, um, for uh, April 3rd through the 5th. And that's the one that's in Oaks. Um, then another one that kind of caught my eye was the Darksum Art and Craft Market out of the crypt. Um, and that's in Philadelphia. That's actually going to be on Sunday, April 19th. Never that just kind of sounded like a interesting, you know, it's more, it's not a, a comic con. It's more of like a, um, not like a flea market, but basically an arts, so it's uh, like the artist alley from comic con <laughs> kind of, you know, but if you're into like Gothic stuff, you know, this was kind of the, the other thing. And then to go along with, uh, Monster Mania, they're actually doing something this year called Pop Mania, um, and it's going to be June 5th through the 7th at the same location in Cherry Hill. It's the same company that does Monster Mania, but I guess Monster Mania is always horror-themed, and this is supposed to be more pop culture. Um, so, But they have a couple of people from Walking Dead that are going to be... Uh, guest starring there so shane from walking dead will be there um gamma will be there um oh really yeah and then they're doing a couple of people from clerks will be there and the one that i was thought was really funny was jesse the body ventura oh <laughs> governor body <laughs> I thought that was funny. And that one's going to be uh, the beginning of June, um, the 5th through the 7th, uh, at the same location. So, you know, as time goes on, I'm sure well, there'll be Punisher's more. going to be there, too. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I said. Yeah. Shane was uh, Shane. And nice. then Gamma, you know. Um, so, yeah, kind of, kind of interesting uh, group of, of people. So I wonder, you know, because at... Monster Mania, a lot of the merchandise that they have is obviously more, you know, horror related uh, that they sell. I'm guessing, you know, at Pop Mania, it's going to be more like, you know, a mini version of Comic Con, right. you know, with a little bit of, of everything there. So, you know, that that's something new that they've uh, that they're doing because they've never done just a pop. You know, it's always just been Monster Mania. Uh, and then again, we have Keystone Comic Con, which is the end of August, and then Retro Con, which Retro -Con. is another one that is held at the Greater Philadelphia Expo. That is towards the end of September. So, still yeah, I know. <laughs> oh wait! Oh wait! Is. Hold on! It it actually wow. worked. Look at that, huh? Who would have thought? Um, so yeah, so you know, it's almost like every month or so there there's something to uh, to look forward to. So you know, you know, and I, it's funny. I look back. What, 
almost 15 years now, when we started going to conventions, mm-hmm. it was like Wizard World was the only thing in the area. Yeah, yeah. And now, you know, they realize, you know, and obviously we knew San Diego, you know, was around and New York had been around. Right. It was all you know, the big ones. It was ones. all the big ones. And now it's nice to see that, it was you like, know. It was almost like professional wrestling where everyone had their own regional circuit that you'd go <laughs> right. to, right? But now it's nice that, you know, there are these smaller venues, you know, for people that aren't into, you know, the big giant crowds, yeah. you know. And well, that was like our experience at New York Comic Con. It was just right. way too packed for that venue. Right. Like, it would be nice to go back to New York Comic Con again, but Let's not we just Sunday. we just didn't have a very good experience. But yet there are people that go, you know, every year to it and and have a good experience. Loved so, our Uber experience up there. Though. Yeah, the that Uber that was great. that was the best thing ever for that. <laughs> So, all right, I think that was it. You didn't tag our, uh, I our contacts oh on God. here, so we got to do it by memory now. Oh, goodness. I don't know if I can do that. All right, so you can email us. We'd love to get your feedback at comments at insightsintothings.com. You can get us on Facebook at facebook.com backslash insights into things podcast you can get us on the web at www.insightsintothings.com twitter at insights underscore things.com and on twitch we're streaming live right now at twitch.tv slash insights into things on web did we say our website we said our web youtube uh, youtube youtube.com backslash insights into things i think that's everything <laughs> yeah that is because okay. i opened up a previous Cheater. note <laughs> And I think that's it. That is it. We're out of here. Have a good week, everyone. Bye. Bye.